All right, guys, this is a little extra instruction for slope and graphing. It's my first time using this uh, document camera in my recorder, so I'm hoping it will work okay. <clears throat> uh, this is for the students who are gone for the past couple days. Uh, I know there was a, a few of you, and this is kind of my way of catching you up, basically kind of recapping everything that we were talking about, right? So first couple questions deal with slope. All right, and we have to remember our slope formula. So our rise over run, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You know, very important formula for slope. Um, we can use this whenever we have two coordinate points. So two coordinate points, we plug it into the formula, and then we can find the slope. This is different than counting the boxes if we were given a graph. Okay, so you can put it in exactly as is. Uh, if I cough a couple times, I'm sorry. It's uh, my allergies are, are kind of bad, so I'm actually going to try something else real quick. Sorry. There we go. All right. Uh, all right. The first thing I want to do is identify my y's. So I take my two coordinate points, and these are two points on a coordinate plane. Identify those uh, three and five. So we can label this one as y2 and this one as y1. So that's that's fine. So let's plug in three for my y2. It's so important just to use my y's on top because that's the rise of my graph. Remember, it's rise over run. Just my y's, just my x's. So I use 3. That minus sign is always part of that original formula. Sometimes it'll get canceled out. Sometimes it won't. If you put a positive number, like this 5 is positive, into there, well, obviously, that minus sign does not cancel out. It's just 3 minus 5. All right, so 3 minus 5. And that equals negative 2. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and then I'm going to label my x's. Well, where are my x's? My 7 and my 4. If I used this 3 first for my y's, I have to use this 7 first for my x's. It's technically my x2. All right, just follow that same order. So 7 minus 4 is 3. And just like that, we have our answer. So my slope is negative 2 over 3. That means if we were to graph this, it would go down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. I'm going to speed up so um, it's, the video is not too, too long. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Here we go. My y's are 1 and 3. So 1 minus 3, what happens would be negative 2 again. And then what are my x's? Negative 4 and 5. So I'm going to put in negative 4 minus, because that's part of the formula here, 5. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. You have to be very careful here. Two negatives, they cancel out, they make a positive. So if you get two ne negatives for both, <coughs> excuse me, then those would cancel out. It would be positive 2 over 9. So it would be 2 over 9, 2 over 9, up 2 over 9, up 2 over 9, okay? All right, number 3, here we go. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, this one is special. I'm, I like this one. It's a good one. What are my y's? My 5 and my negative 1. So let's put in my y's then. I'm going to put in my 5 minus, because that's part of the original equation. Well, what's my other y? Uh-oh, negative 1. What does that mean? If we ever have two negatives back to back, automatically cancel out and turn into a plus. All right, this is the example of if we put in a negative number for our second value here, then they would cancel out. That turns into a plus. 5 plus 1 equals positive 6. Where are my x's? 2 and 4. Here we go. Uh, 2 minus 4. Notice how the negative did not cancel out. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Well, I think I, uh, I can reduce this. My 6 over 2, well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. If I have one positive and one negative, well, that stays negative then. My slope is either negative 3 over 1, if you want to put that, or just negative 3. Those are my slope. Finding slope between two points. Here we go. Which is an equation for line L in the accompanying diagram? Okay, so we can kind of do process of elimination right here y equals mx plus b. m always stands for our slope, which is what we did up here. 
you know, up, up three over one or down three over one. This B value always stands for my Y intercept, right? So where's my line crossing my Y axis? My Y axis is up and down, so what's my Y intercept? Oh look, negative four. I can automatically eliminate D because that's a positive two. Where's, where's my other negative four Y intercept? Uh-oh, there's one, there's one. Well, let's look at A and do that. Oh crap, we can't really find out the slope. Like up two over one, up two over one, that's kind of hard. Well, actually, I think I just figured it out. If I go up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, if I go up, then that's a positive slope. Also, if that line is increasing from left to right, going up from left to right, that's a positive slope. Which one of these has a positive slope? Well, that's going to be B. That negative 2 is a negative slope right there. Boom. All right, here we go. Write an equation of a line whose slope is 2 and whose y-intercept is negative 3. These are the easy ones. In my general form, y equals mx plus b, like I was saying, m is always my slope, b is always my y-intercept, so I'm literally just building an equation here. The y never changes, y equals, well, what's, so what's my slope is, well, it says 2, so I'm literally just going to put 2. My x never changes, that's my other variable. And then what is my y-intercept? Well, it's negative 3, so I'm literally just going to put negative 3. Sweet. All right, these are meant to be pretty easy as well. An equation whose graph has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 3, well, that's y equals, I'm just going to build it like I did before. If my slope is negative 2, that's negative 2, then x. My y-intercept of 3, well, that's a positive 3. Well, which one is negative 2x plus 3? Uh, no, because that's my y. I have to have my y first. x equals, that doesn't make any sense. There's y equals, but 3 is my y-intercept. Here, that's wrong, because that's my slope. y equals negative 2x plus 3. There we go. Let's beat. And when creating this, uh, I didn't realize that these were the, really the same questions. Slope negative 2, y-intercept of 3 again. Here we go. Negative 2x plus 3 again. Uh, where's negative 2x plus 3 plus 3 plus... There we go. Negative 2x plus 3. Same. These are just the same lines. Okay. Almost done with this page. Last one. Write an equation of a line whose slope is negative 2 and whose y-intercept is positive 1. Okay, well, same thing. y equals, there's a lot of negative 2 slopes on this page. Uh, negative 2x, because that's my slope. Negative 2, that value right there. It's not m, um, but it's negative 2. The general, remember, is y equals mx plus b. m is slope. b is y-intercept. Positive 1 for my y-intercept, so I literally just put positive 1. So it's y equals negative 2x plus 1. All right, three more. These are the kind of hard ones. All right, here, these are the, uh, like I was saying, the more difficult ones because we have to convert these equations into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So we have to get that y all by itself. All right? And we're going to do that through just a couple steps using algebra. So I'm just going to rewrite my equation over here, 3x minus 4y equals 12. It's the same equation, right? So I want to get it in this form, and then I can graph it. All right? And this is what I want you to get in the habit of. Circle that y, because we're getting that y by itself. Then split your middle, or split your equal sign. All right? If we look to the right or the left of this negative 4y, well, we want to get rid of the entire x term. We want to get rid of the entire x term right here. Right? We, totally, we just want to cancel that out, get it over to the other side. So that's a positive 3x. So remember, I'm just trying to get my y by itself. That's my goal. That's my goal. Right? If that's a positive 3x, I'm going to subtract 3x. Because guess what? That whole term is gone. So I'm going to kind of put a minus 3x to the side right here. I'm going to rewrite my equation. What do I know? Negative 4y equals now, it is so important to realize these are not like terms. Not like terms. We cannot combine them. All right? So what we want to do, though, is put it 
in this form right here. So it would make perfect sense to put my negative 3x listed first, because that's the first part of the right side of my formula, and then my 12. And that's a positive 12, so I'm just going to put plus 12. All I did was move that x value term over to the other side. All right? Now I have that because they're not like terms. My very last step is to divide by negative 4 everywhere. Please make sure to divide by negative 4 because we want that y positive and all by itself. All right? Those cancel out. My final answer is y equals. All right? If I have two negatives right here, all right, those cancel out. You have to be careful about that. And leave it as a fraction. That's fine. Leave it as the slope as a fraction. Because this just means now it's positive. It's up 3 over 4. Up 3 over 4. All right. What is 12 divided by negative 4? Well, 1 positive and 1 negative make a negative 3. So my final answer is y equals 3 fourths x minus 3. All right. Now let's graph it. Okay. So negative 3, 1, 2, 3 is my y-intercept. So draw a point at the negative 3. And like I was saying, it is up 3 over 4. Here's my other point. And the next one goes off graph. That's fine. I really only need two dots. That's totally fine. Um, we always go to the right. When we're graphing, we always go to the right after we go up or down. Right? It's a positive slope. That means from that point we go up, and we're always running to the right if we're starting from the y-axis. So there's my line. Okay. I'm going to go relatively quick on this one. Uh, this one, we looked, we see parentheses. Don't be confused with the parentheses. That just means we have to, uh, boom, boom, distribute to get rid of the parentheses. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite my new equation over here. I still have y plus 5 equals, well, to get rid of the parentheses, I'm just distributing. 2 times x is 2x. Okay, I'm multiplying by using the distributive property. 2 times 1 is positive 2. Oh, sweet. Well, if I want to get that y all by itself, let's look to the left or the right. What do I have to get rid of? I have to get rid of that positive 5. I'm going to subtract 5. Where do I subtract 5 from? The 2x or the 2? Well, from the 2, because those are like terms. You can only do it with the other like term. And that equals 2 minus 5, negative 3. And we are done. My y drops down. It is all by itself. Nothing happened to that 2x, so I dropped that down. There's my equation. y equals 2x minus 3. Now, let's graph it. Well, negative 3 again. That's fine. That's just coincidence. Negative 3 again. Now, with 2 as our slope, well, what's 2 as a fraction? 2 over 1. All right, so we need a whole number. We're just running to the right. 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. There's our line. All right, very last one. This video will be about 15 minutes. All right, here we go. I'm going to rewrite my equation over here. 3y plus 6x equals 12. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to circle my y. That's what I want to get by itself. Split my equal sign. Well, here we go. Let's look to the right or the left. What whole term do I have to get rid of? i got to get rid of that entire 6x. So if that's a positive 6x, I'm going to subtract it. Cancels out. Boom. Gone. Gone. Now I'm going to subtract 6x over here. Please be careful. This is, once again, not like terms. Right? So I'm going to rearrange my equation now. What do I know? My 3y is all by itself. It makes perfect sense to put that negative 6x first, because that's going to follow my slope-intercept form formula. y equals mx plus b. Drop down that negative, or I'm sorry, positive 12. It's positive, so that's a plus 12. Hey, sweet. I'm almost done again. Divide everything by a positive 3, because it's a positive 3. There's no negative. Now my y is by itself. Yay. Just really two steps. y equals, okay, here we go. So negative 6x divided by 3. Well, that's negative 2x. Uh, positive 12 divided by positive 3. Well, that's positive 4. And we just got it. y equals negative 2x plus 4. And now let's graph. 4 is my y-intercept, so I always start at my y-intercept, 4. My slope is negative 2, so that means it is down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2, 
even though it's negative, we still go to the right, down 2 over 1. That negative just means we go down from points. Okay, so three main areas, slope, finding slope using our slope formula, identifying slope and y-intercept and writing equations, and then converting equations to slope-intercept form, and then graphing. There we go. Thank you, guys.